I was a punk, and I, and I was a completely a punk, and probably one song. of the only ones in Hatton Garden at the time. So yeah. I get picked on for that reason. But you know, you, I don't know if it was stubborn or what, but I stuck to that, <laughs> and I also stuck to jewelry. But I, I went and worked for a designer, and I think it was working for that designer that then I knew that there is much more to this industry. Stephen Webster is um, is a company that enjoys to make um, quite bold statement jewellery, quite colourful. Because after sort of 26 years of being in the industry, you, if you're lucky enough to pull out the parts that you enjoy right. to work in and with, um, that's what I've done. It's all I know, that's for sure. <laughs> and, and I suppose because, you know, it, my wife who works in the business as well, my brother, he's in the workshop. Um, you know, this is my, my livelihood, my family. Uh, it, you know, it's everything. It, I came from, the, I suppose, the wrong side of the tracks. And uh, for a start, I went to art school when I was 16, not really knowing what, what to do, right. and, and picked up on jewellery while I was there, thinking, this this really looks great. I don't know if it was the tools, the, the shiny objects, I don't know what it was, but something I honed in on, and, um, and I've stuck with it. I left art school to go straight into a job. Uh, I was making handmade chains in Hatton Garden, which, which really, you know, thinking about that now, yeah, that is, that is a very small, stiff world. I knew that this was not what I wanted to do, and, and almost as soon as I started, I started looking for another job. Hey, what years are we talking now? This is mid-70s, and I was a punk, and I, and I was a completely a punk, and um, so you were a I was probably one side. of the only ones in Hatton Garden at the time, so I'd yeah. get picked on for that reason. But you know, you, I don't know if it was stubborn or what, but I, um, I stuck to that, <laughs> and I also stuck to jewellery. But I, I went and worked for a designer, and I think it was working for that designer that then I knew that, there, that this actually can be, there is much more to this industry. Who, who was that? It was a guy called John Donald. There was a few of them, there was a guy called Andrew Greamer, it was David Yeah, he's Thomas. gone off to Switzerland to start now. Yeah. They were kind of the pioneers of uh, a lot of modern jewellery. Prior to, the, to this group, yes. it was very much, certainly in Britain, yeah. jewellery had not really evolved much from like Victorian styles. Yeah, you know, when, when people got engaged, they bought pretty much a, a ring that looked like their grandmother's ring. It, it, it was very little difference. Yes. And, and this sort of crowd came along, and I guess once you get this uh, a, a movement, it feeds off itself, so more people join. And there, it was a period where there was interest in jewellery being made, yes. in, in, certainly in Britain and uh, in Europe. It, up to what had been before, it was, it was even avant-garde. You know, it was, it was very new. They were using new materials. I mean, like Andrew Greenman would use big natural crystals, yes. you know, and things which no one had used. In jewellery, by, by the late 70s, early 80s, it had almost gone. It was wow. unbelievable. But everything became more concerning, it, and it, might, it started to look very corporate. I think it was fashionable to be, you know, maybe a banker or maybe, you know, in the city, and be, there was this corporate look, and that didn't fit with avant-garde anything. Some of the things we make that are the most successful, which is a lot of rings and yeah. braces and things, they don't get bought for occasion. They get bought because, you know, a woman usually self-purchased, comes in and she says, that ring in blue, I've got this blue outfit and that's going to be perfect. And yeah. it is much more that way. I was a craftsman. The first, say, 10 years, all I wanted to do was make jewellery beautifully. Yes. So I came from a different sort of you area. Came from the yeah. artisanal side. I've had to learn to be somewhat of a businessman because I employ 20 people now and, and I have to learn to be a salesperson because I have to, you know, I'm off to New York again tomorrow on a, on a round America trip. I just got back three days ago. Selling, you know, and so yeah, luckily I like it. You know, I like people and 
that's a big bonus. And when you were talking earlier about the British, where were the British, you know, with jewellery, no one really knew a British, it's to my advantage. I go to stores and I'll be the only British designer. You know, they'll have Italians there, they'll have Americans there, domestic, they'll have different things, but a British guy who comes dressed in Oswald Botang suits is a novelty act. Why is it that the Brits haven't got an LDMH or an Hermes? Even though we give off this thing that we do understand about luxury, we don't. The French understand about luxury. They, they understand protecting and building a brand. I don't think we're very good at that. We're quite good at encouraging people um, to be, I suppose, sort of free of thinking, experimental in our art school. Certainly that art school, St. Martin's, which is where a lot of people come from. Yes. It feeds people to be doing something different. Rather than being taught, this is how we're gonna make beautiful couture things. Yes. It's something, it's a feeling. It's, it's a street way, yeah. because that's attractive to young people. And people wanna be like, they wanna be young people. People don't wanna be old people. Britain, people are like a bit scared to have a big vision. Why? You know, I, I don't it's know. Very, it's very Anglo-Saxon to be very yeah, afraid of it is. success. Uh, absolutely, and I think when uh, when I first started going over to America, I definitely was like that. I'd look at some of the American designers who've been very successful, you know, like David German and, and John Hardy and some of these people, and I think, well, that's them. That's not what I do. Now, sort of three years down the line of of actually having some success in America. I've, I've changed my vision. Right. You know, like even a year and a half ago, there were six of us in the company. Now there's, there's I think it's 21 actually. We create a mental atmosphere. Where does your inspiration come from? It generally is not something you can sit down with a pencil and say, I'm gonna come up with a new idea that's gonna be a big successful collection. You, you know, you it will be something and you, you know, then you can sort of work on it. I like to think we make fashion forward fine jewellery.